Hello, my name is Sophia Miksha and I'm a 10th grade high schooler, here to teach you everything you need to know about the skeletal and muscular systems and how they work together to become the musculoskeletal system. Today I will be going over components of skeletal and muscular systems, functions of these systems, axial versus appendicular, important bones in the body, different types of muscles, musculoskeletal systems, how these two systems go hand in hand and work together, how movements are able to occur, how to keep the musculoskeletal system as healthy as possible, osteoporosis, and more. First, let's start with the skeletal system. The skeletal system consists of bones, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments in the body. Altogether, the skeleton makes up about 20% of a person's body weight. An adult skeleton contains 206 bones. Children's skeletons actually contain more bones because some of them, including those of the skull, fuse together as they grow up. That's why our facial and overall bone structure can change as we grow up. There are some differences in the male and female skeleton. The male skeleton is usually longer and has a high bone mass. The female skeleton, on the other hand, has a broader pelvis to accommodate for pregnancy and childbirth. Regardless of age or sex, the skeletal system can be broken down into two parts, known as the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Your axial skeleton is made up of the bones in your head, neck, back, and chest. Your appendicular skeleton is made up of everything else, the bones that attach to your axial skeleton. Your appendicular skeleton includes the bones in your shoulders, pelvis, and limbs, including your arms, hands, legs, and feet. Here's a visual if you need it. The red represents the appendicular skeleton, while the blue represents the axial skeleton. Now let's talk about the function of the skeletal system. The skeletal system provides support, allows movement, protects organs, and makes blood cells from the bone marrow in our bones. The skeletal system serves as the main storage system for calcium and phosphorus. Some important bones in the body include the skull, which protects our brain, our femur, which is the largest bone in our body, the vertebrae, which protects and supports our spinal cord, our ribs, which protects our lungs, and our mandible, which we use to be able to chew and eat food. Tendons and ligaments are like the connector pieces of a Lego set so that the structure doesn't fall apart. Ligaments attach bone to bone, joints, are where two bones meet to allow movement. Joints can be fixed, slightly movable, or freely movable, while tendons attach muscle to bone. Now let's talk more about the muscular system. The muscular system is composed of specialized cells called muscle fibers. Their predominant function is contractibility. Muscles attached to bones or internal organs and blood vessels are responsible for movement. Nearly all movement in the body is the result of muscle contraction. There are about 600 muscles in the human body. Muscles have a range of functions from pumping blood and supporting movement to lifting heavy weights or giving birth. Muscles work by either contracting or relaxing to cause movement. This movement may be voluntary, meaning the movement is made consciously or done involuntary without our awareness. There are three different types of muscles in our body. The skeletal muscle is the specialized tissue that is attached to bones and allows movement. Skeletal muscles are under our conscious control, which is why they are known as voluntary muscles. Smooth muscles are located in various internal structures, including the digestive tract, uterus, and blood vessels, such as arteries. Smooth muscle is arranged in layered sheets that contract in waves along the length of the structure. Another common term is involuntary muscle. Cardiac muscle is the muscle specific to the heart. The heart contracts and relaxes without our conscious awareness, so it's involuntary as well. Now, how do the muscular and skeletal systems work together? Well, different components of each system are used for movement to occur, and for the systems to work properly, they must partially rely on each other. For example, ten tendons connect the skeletal system to the muscular system by attaching muscle to bone. These two systems work together so that they can be called the muscular skeletal system. Together, they support your body's weight, maintain your posture, and help you move. Without the muscular system assisting the skeletal system, we wouldn't be able to move and vice versa. We wouldn't be able to do anything if one of the systems were absent. Now let's talk about 
How do movements happen? This has a lot to do with your nervous system. The nervous system controls your voluntary muscle movements. And movements happen when your nervous system, brain, and nerves send a message to activate your skeletal or voluntary muscles. Your muscle fibers contract in response to the message. When the muscle activates or bunches up, it pulls on the tendon. The tendon pulls the bone, making it move. And then to relax the muscle, your nervous system sends another message that triggers the muscles to relax or deactivate. The relaxed muscles releases tension, moving the bone to a resting position. How can I keep my muscular skeletal system healthy? The best way to take care of your musculoskeletal system is to maintain good health overall. To keep your bones and muscles healthy, you should exercise often, get plenty of sleep so that your bones and muscles have time to recover and build, maintain a healthy weight, make healthy food choices, including a balanced diet of fruits and vegetables, lean protein, and milk for strong bones, and quit smoking as well as avoid tobacco. If you don't keep your bones healthy, you can develop a common disease known as osteoporosis, which leads to a decrease in bone strength, making the bones more susceptible to fractures and breaks. Make sure you drink plenty of milk so that your bones can have lots of calcium and you won't be as successful to diseases like osteoporosis. Milk contains lots of important nutrients along with calcium and phosphorus, which is very important for your bones. Now you know why it's very important to maintain a healthy musculoskeletal system and a lot more about the individual system. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below or email me at anatomymastered at gmail.com.